Hare Krishna, please accept Hare the Krishna humble obeisance. All glories to Shri Prabhupada. Always Prabhupada. So we'll right. start. Hare Krishna. Uh, Hare Krishna I would like Hare Krishna Prabhu. I would like to chant the Pranams mantra. Please, everybody, try to uh, keep your camera on. I'll get into this question very soon. Om Ajnana Timiran Dhasya Gyananjana Salakaya Chakchur Unmilitam Jena Tasmai Sri Guru Shri Chaitanya Mano Vishtam Sthapitam Jena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Yadati Swapadantikam Bukam Karoti Vachalam Pangum Langhayate Grim Yat Kripata Daham Bande Shri Guru Dinataranam Pramananda Madhum <coughs> Shri Chaitanya Ishwaram Nama Om Vishnu Padayo Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Vedanto Swami Tinamine Namaste Sarswate Deve Gauruvani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Pashat Desha Tarine Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityanando Sri Advaita Gadadhar Siva Sadi Gauru Bhakti Vindo Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Anand Koti Vaishnava Vrind ki jai, is kon founder acharya, hi jivanga chila prabhu paad ki, jai symbol bhakti Vrind ki, jai nitai gaur premnand. Hare Krishna, so welcome you all back to our normal session. So last week we had exam and hope all of you enjoyed it. Like the exam. Of course it was not very heavy questions, so devotee who had done the homework for them, of course it would have been much easier. So can everybody hear me, Hare Krishna? Yes, Prabhuji. Thank you, thank you. So we are we are going through a very important topic, you know, very powerful uh, topic, and this is basically uh, going to give us a heart, you know, like uh, heart of our devotional service. So some of the concept that we'll talk, uh, please make sure that uh, you understand it. Also, I don't know how you do it. Like, uh, are you reading on regular basis? Do you read before coming to class or do you read after the class? I'm not sure about that. <clears throat> so that's first thing uh, that please uh, try to read. I do read. Uh, without reading, you know, I can't tell you to read. And uh, also, uh, <clears throat> please make notes of the points that, you know, is being mentioned here. Some of the points, if it's not clear, then at the end of the, you know, course, I'll send you all of these uh, PowerPoint presentations. But please make sure that some of the key points, key concept, as we are talking, uh, you are making note of it. It's very important to make note. And uh, <clears throat> if you really do not give enough time to understand the, uh, topic or the subject or the concept that we're going to discuss, what happens is that it creates, you know, uh, confusion. So things will start kind of, you know, uh, overlapping, running over each other. So, uh, you know, here and there things will kind of, you know, not make sense. Oh, I know like that, but why you are saying like that? So Shastric understanding is very important. It's very, very important that we know some of these concepts, you know, very clearly and try to apply those in our day-to-day uh, -day life. So we are talking uh, about the introduction. And uh, in introduction, there are Mangalacharan, Mangalacharan that we talked. And Mangalacharan has basically Vastu Nirdes, uh, Guru Vandana, and Vaishnava Vandana. And then uh, it also has uh, Granth Vibhag means uh, what are the different, you know, division of the nectar of devotion. And finally, 
it gives the definition of pure devotional service uttama bhakti so in the introduction of the nectar of devotion the definition for pure bhakti is given so we have kind of very much covered uh, uh, mangla charan prayers we are almost done and uh, we have just one section left and then today we'll try to go over the uh, grantha vibhag and then we'll look at definition of the uttama bhakti given by Sira uh, Rupa Goswami. So that's the you know goal for today. So as I said, the introduction has <coughs> so many paragraphs. The first six paragraphs are talking about the Manglacharan, and then after that we'll see a brief uh, description of the contents of the book, which is called Grantha Vibhag, and then the last part of the paragraphs, few paragraphs are talking about definition of pure devotional service so it's very very powerful once we get into it so we talked about uh, vastu nirdesh vastu nirdesh is basically the essence of the uh, subject matter the subject matter is krishna all the vedic uh, writings literature directly or indirectly subject matter is krishna uh, himself and then we talked about namaskar namaskar contains uh, offering to our spiritual master supreme personality of godhead and uh, devotee and then today we are going to talk about uh, asirvad so vastu nirdesh is basically akil rasa amrita murti in the supreme personality of godhead <coughs> who reciprocates reciprocates reciprocation he does uh, based upon the desire of a person whatever way we approach supreme personality of godhead lord as akhil rasa amrita murti he similarly corresponds with uh, that uh, person so he is uh, <coughs> master of all the rasa and uh, we talked about 12 prominent rasa then we got into namaskar namaskar is for guru vaisnava and bhagwan and then we spoke about <coughs> what is the position of a uh, devotee and we saw the example of a uh, makara which is basically uh, shark shark in the uh, ocean and uh, we try to understand the feature of the uh, shark uh, it basically never tries to come to the uh, rivers although all the rivers from all over the place going and merging into the ocean but shark has no uh, interest with the rivers and rivers are compared as a <coughs> uh, uh, as a means or as a uh, methods method uh, for liberation so those rivers represents liberation so five types of you know liberation so devotee have no interest devotees have no interest for any one of these liberation that's very important to be noted and then what he is doing he is joyfully enjoying the bhakti rasa only and is you know diving deeper that's another important point devotee does not mean so off devotee doesn't mean puja la pratistha devotee does not mean power devotee a pure devotee has nothing to do with all of these things you know it's all our contamination uh, you know we'll talk about some of those concepts like what is the value what is the conditioning uh, <clears throat> we'll talk about that so so we have to live a value-based life we are conditioned living being and conditioning has <coughs> certain you know type of uh, attachment it has uh, it has attraction for the things which are of no importance it's called asat trishna but uh, our endeavor should be that we should try to live a value-based life
life. And act of devotion is what going to teach us that what should be our value and how we should try to, uh, you know, apply those values in our day-to-day -day, uh, experience. So, uh, since devotee have nothing to do with the, any ulterior motivation, and he is joyfully, deeply swimming in the ocean of bhakti, he never get caught by the net. And that is another beautiful, you know, concept. The devotee is not, you know, caught up by, uh, you know, the net when fisherman is trying to uh, catch. So he is beyond the uh, suffering that this material nature is going to impose on. So keep some of these things, you know, as a question also. How you can say that the devotees are not suffering? Yes, devotee doesn't suffer. There is nothing, you know, the, you know, the, the suffering happens because of the attachment. But if the, you know, if somebody who is completely detached, uh, they are literally not suffering. And examples are our six Goswamis. Six Goswamis, <coughs> they had nothing, but at the same time, they had everything. So uh, today uh, we are going to talk about Asirvad. So what is the Asirvad? It says that Mimamsa Badwagena Kathinam Api Kuntyam Ashau Jihuam. Asparto Sanatana Suchiram Tava Bhakti Ras Amritam Bodhi Ras Amritam Rasa Amritam Abodhi. So, uh, whenever there is a volcano that uh, erupts on uh, earthly planet, you know, so there are mountains, and that mountain might be next to neighborhood that mountain, you know, maybe close to, <coughs> you know, some of the uh, uh, city life or, or even, you know, uh, industrial life, whatever it is. If the volcano erupts, the fire, the lava that comes out of that volcanoes, that basically kills and damage things which are nearby. So, uh, it's not uh, basically good. But when the same uh, uh, volcanic uh, eruption is happening in the ocean, then it doesn't harm the people who are outside the ocean because the water, the volume of water, the body of water that's inside the ocean, that subsides that uh, uh, volcanic eruption. Okay, so that's another, you know, beautiful concept that we have to understand that uh, devotees, uh, devotees are uh, basically not getting impacted by sansara, dava, nalalitha loka, taranya karunya ghana ganatam, prapta shakalyana guna namasya, bande guru shri charna ravindam. So sansara, dava, nalalitha loka, you know, this, this material world is compared with the blazing fire, forest fire. What's happening is that ghana ghana tom, you know, a very dense rain is being showered. And what happens if there is forest fire? At the same time, if rain is start happening, then the fire is going to be subsided. So likewise, devotee who are engaged in a devotional service, their suffering is subsided. Their suffering is subsided. Likewise, when the volcanic eruption happens in ocean, it doesn't doesn't harm the people who are outside of the ocean. But the same eruption, if it happens <coughs> close to a neighborhood, close to a city life, then it affects. You know, it it has impact to everybody who are in this uh, neighboring area. So that's how. Uh, we can understand okay it's very important you know also and we'll talk about that bhakti rasamrita uh, sindhu <clears throat> will help us understand that is it like somebody else we are talking about and or we are talking about ourselves are we outside of the ocean 
or we are inside the ocean. Am I that, uh, you know, shark or am I not that shark? All of that, you know, concept will be uh, coming ahead. But, but please don't think that this is not applying to us. All of us, all of us are being saved. All of us are being protected because this, this Sansar Dawanal is, is happening. It's right now going on. This is the, the fire is, you know, uh, continuing. But, but since we have taken the shelter of our spiritual master, we have uh, taken the shelter of Krishna, Guru Krishna uh, and Shastra, we are being protected. Now you will say that, am I a pure devotee? No, I, you know, if I look at uh, myself, I might, I, it doesn't appear that I'm a pure devotee. I do not fall on the definition of the pure devotee. But then, then how I am going to be saved by this Dawanal, by this forest fire? We'll talk about that. So, <clears throat> after Asirvad, the next segment that comes is basically uh, what are the description of the you know, different contents or different you know, subject that we are going to see in Nectar of Devotion. So, Bhakti Samrita Sindhu has this four part, like Ocean has you know, four part, four direction, Eastern Ocean, Eastern Ocean, and then Southern, Western, and Northern. There, so there are four, uh, you know, ocean. So Sindhu, you know, Bhakti Samrita Sindhu. Sometimes, uh, you know, uh, it gets a little bit confused why we are talking about Sindhu here. It's just, the, you know, the way author wants to call it out. So if you uh, read uh, Bhagavatam, in Bhagavatam, we can askand, askand A, you know, askand one, askand two, like canto one, canto two, canto three, canto four, canto five, like that. It goes up to canto 12. But if you look at the Ramayan, how we say in Ramayan? Lila, Bal Lila, Ayodhya Lila, you know, ask, you know and uh, uh, Sundar Khand or Khand, you know, like I say that in the Bal Khand, Ayodhya Khand, you know, Sundar Khand, Yudh Khand, like that. So just the way, you know, author calls it out. Uh, there is nothing very specific, okay? So, uh, nectar of uh, devotion, since it's talking about uh, <coughs> uh, uh, devotion, uh, that is, that is, or the ocean of uh, uh, devotion, it basically, Sri Rupa Goswami decided to call it out, Eastern Ocean, Southern Ocean, Western Ocean, Northern Ocean, just the, you know, different way of uh, calling it out. Like uh, Vishnath Chakvarti Thakur, for his uh, 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 write-up, he, you know, he is calling out, uh, like Madhurya Kadamni, uh, Cloud Nectar 1, Cloud Nectar 2, Cloud Nectar 3, like that. So somebody may ask, you know, why we are, why is, what's the difference between Cloud Nectar 1 and, uh, uh, you know, Kanda? No, it's same thing. It's just the other way of calling it out, okay? So, so, so if you ask me, what's the specific meaning? Nothing, you know, just... Uh, that's the way, that's the way Sila Rupa Goswami would like to call it out, especially the direction because it's ocean, ocean has four part. So he, he is calling them out in the four direction. Our Bhakti Rasamrita, our uh, Bhakti Shastri course is only going to cover part one, Eastern Ocean. We are not going to talk about part two, part three, part four. Part three and part four, you know, in fact, even some part of part two, I know is not advised for us to read also. <clears throat> so our basically discussion will be mostly on uh, part one. And then in the ocean, there is a wave. So likewise, in Eastern uh, part, there are four waves. So wave one, wave two, wave three, and wave four. And wave one is going to talk about Samanya Bhakti. What is the what is the uh, real meaning of bhakti? There are so many things, you know, people are doing. Does it fall into the category of bhakti? Okay, people are doing, you know, bhakti of so many people, so many personality, you know, so much, you know, uh, ways people think that uh, they are engaged in devotional service, but that, that really, does that really mean that somebody is engaged in devotional service? What exactly is the you know, devotional service? We need to have a very well-defined technical definition of what is the uh, bhakti. 
So, so first uh, part uh, we have one is going to teach us what exactly is the bhakti, and the definition of the pure bhakti will start right, right, you know, in the introduction, and then it will continue in chapter one, and then the wave two talks about uh, sadhana bhakti, sadhana bhakti is basically we are engaged <coughs> in devotional service, and we are abide to follow a specific rules and regulations. So in sadhana bhakti, it's prominently following the rules and regulations. And then we have theory is bhava bhakti. Now devotee has you know advanced and he has come to the stage of bhava, where he has now emotion for the uh, supreme personality of Godhead. And then <coughs> uh, ultimate goal is to have prema, obtain the prem for supreme personality of Godhead, and that's prema bhakti. So, uh, so sadhana bhakti, bhava bhakti, and uh, prema bhakti. Sadhana bhakti has also a part, so we'll talk about all of that once we get there. Vedi bhakti and raganuga bhakti, that's coming up. Bhava bhakti and prema uh, bhakti. So, Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, in fact, gives a very technical definition of uh, what's the bhakti and what's sadhana bhakti. In sadhana bhakti, what type of you know understanding is with badi uh, uh, bhakti and what's the understanding with raganuga bhakti? How to know that you have advanced to the stage of bhava bhakti? How to know that you have you know come to the stage of prema bhakti? It's all of these uh, that we have mentioned here. Are these uh, something that we can get to? Or this, these are just the concept? No, no. If we are serious in our uh, <coughs> devotional service, that's why the definitions are given, because these definitions are nothing but a road map. You know, it's kind of a guideline that says that, or milestone, you can say, that you know you have you know come so far, a uh, hundred miles, and you have thousand miles to go. So you know, it's very much on our desire, on our strength to cover that far and follow the guidance so that we can uh, get there. So please don't think that uh, that we cannot get to the stage of bhava bhakti or we cannot get to the stage of prema bhakti. That's not true. That's not true. All of us, if we are sincere uh, in our sadhana, then at some point uh, we'll come to the stage of prema bhakti. So that's the basically content of nectar of devotion. Any questions before I move to the next chapter, next section of chapter? So is there any significance for the direction like east and south and southern, west and north and, and why we are looking only east and ocean? So is there any uh, uh, significance that why all of this falls in the star notion? Right. Yeah. I mean, is there like a grouping? No, uh, I mean, Eastern Ocean no has, Eastern Direction, direction has. Or is it yeah. just random? So it's random, but Eastern Direction has meaning in uh, Bhagavatam. There is, you know, there is a discussion where, you know, a man is trying to uh, <clears throat> uh, find out which direction should I go? And then the instruction comes, if you uh, if you go south, then you will get into the, you know, <clears throat> area where you will be, or you will lead to the goal where you will be engaged in the uh, karma and jnana uh, marga. If you go west, then you will end up going into the, you know, karmakandic activity where people are doing everything to enjoy their karma. If you go north, then you will end up, you know, having a place where people are doing tantric and all of that. So there is only one way, there is only one direction that you should go, and that should be east direction. Because if you go into the east direction, then there you will find the jewel, hidden jewel. And that hidden jewel is jewel of the bhakti. Okay? So so there are basically meaning of these directions when we talk about Srimad Bhagavatam. But here as you know, ocean has uh, four, I mean, ocean has four directions. 
so just to kind of you know put them in a different section it's just basically here for our uh, for our objective it's just saying that that all of these have different subject they are talking okay. different subject and all of these have you know equal importance okay so we can't say that uh, northern ocean has not much importance uh, over the eastern ocean it's not like that all of these have different context different subject for us so that's the basically purpose of calling out or it's just kind of segmentation that eastern ocean is going to give us a foundation about you know all different types of bhakti and then if you go to part two then now we are talking about symptoms of transcendental rasa so person has now elevated you know he is not he is not in a stage where he is still concerned about about you know how to get up in the morning how to chant my 16 rounds he has crossed all of that and then part three is talking about five prominent rasa okay so how should be the dealing of a devotee in a shanta rasa how should be how how one should be dealing with supreme personality of godhead in shanta rasa how one should be you know dealing in dasya rasa or sakya rasa or vatsalya rasa you know or madhurya rasa so now another you know series of discussion where you have we are following the you know uh, bhakti in dasya rasa so santras das rasa then uh, you know sakya rasa but in reality chetan charita amrita is teaching us that even in the madhurya rasa also everybody is trying to serve the supreme personality of godhead so in conjugal way radha rani and the gopis are also serving the supreme personality of godhead in vatsalya rasa anand maharaj and yashoda mata is also serving shri krishna so a so, lot of details to know okay so these details are segmented in in you know, a different part of this ocean and then seven secondary rasa like bhay and you know uh, krodha and all of that you know is coming into the fourth ocean so just kind of segmentation uh, for a specific you know type of uh, subject matter but oh, our but our but our focus is going to be mostly on the uh, eastern ocean also to understand the part 2 and part 3 and part 4 devotee have to advance like you know advanced devotee like you know such as sri rupa goswami sila prabhupad and other powerful devotee they can also understand that dealing because their bhava their bhava has you know in that stage so for somebody may ask why we can't read it because you know we can't understand the dealing that uh, mother yashoda has with krishna or radha rani is you know dealing with krishna those dealings are very confidential and very kind of deep very subtle also so so at least you know in our stage we are not there to understand what's the bhav of radha rani what's radha rani is doing for krishna that she is the number one devotee of supreme personality of god it if we are struggling with our sadhana bhakti we are still in the stage of a badhi badhi bhakti then how to understand the melo raga you know how to understand you know higher you know emotion for the supreme personality of god it so so these are the basically different section where it talks about higher and higher and higher uh you know taste or higher emotion for the supreme personality of god it but for uh sadaka uh first version is what you know we need to understand and then later maybe 10 15 20 years down to line if you have you know that uh, type of you know intensity more than welcome to read uh, other part does it help prabhu ji yes prabhu thank you just as an observation also in a sadhana ah, bhakti has like good, 15 good. chapters yes, right and also i know this we have more chapters on sadhana bhakti than bhava or prema yeah, bhakti <laughs> yes yes so that's the you know that's the uh, you know we talked about writing a summary so our acharya or goswami is the new that what's most important for for us 
you know, foundation has to be strong. You know, the house can be as many story as you want, or however many of you know a story you know a story you want to have on top of foundation. Make sure that foundation is designed to hold it. So, so sadhana bhakti is very important. So if we are struggling still with our sadhana bhakti, then it's not expected, or it's it's not easier to understand raganuga bhakti. Raganuga bhakti also sadhana bhakti, like bhava bhakti or prema bhakti. Forget about it. So yes, you are right. You are hundred percent right, Prabhuji. Good. Any anybody has anything else? Prabhu, I was just thinking that in uh, Prema Bhakti, where four, will we get any glimpse of uh, part two, three, and four? Or is it. Uh... Mataji, repeat once again, please. Uh, Prabhuji, I was just saying uh, in the way four, where we are uh, showing here as Prema Bhakti, in that section, will we get to see the glimpse of. Uh, uh, Southern Ocean, Western, and Northern Ocean. The rasas over there, or uh, just yeah. curious. So this is yeah, I know it is a good point. This is basically you know gradual uh, progression. So so when we are talking about uh, prema bhakti, we have we have understood bhava bhakti. So the emotion of bhava bhakti is there with Prema Bhakti. And emotion of Raganuga Bhakti is here with the Bhava Bhakti. Okay, so once we understand uh, what is Bhakti, Bhakti, uh, the first, very first, uh, you know, definition of the Bhakti that we'll get from here, that's going to be basically everywhere. So, so Sadhana, you know, Bhakti. So Sadhana Bhakti, that what is the Bhakti, you know, Bhakti will just soon, very soon, we are going to see that slide. And then when we talk Bhava Bhakti, Bhava is there, but Bhakti has to be also there. When we are talking about Prema Bhakti, Prema is there, but Bhakti has to be there. So the definition of the Bhakti will come from, you know, very soon, you know, uh, from next few slides. And then that Bhakti will carry on all over the, you know, other four wave, but it will build on that one. So that means we are not losing the Basic definition of the bhakti, like anavilasita sunyam gyan karmadi anavritam anukulyanu krishnanu bhakti anusilanam. So, if bhakti is not anavilasita sunyam, okay, that has to be there, right? On that, now in the very beginning, we are doing the bhakti as our ritual, as our activity. I have to you know, abide with you know rules and regulations, get up in the morning, chant 16 rounds, follow four regulatory principles, be humble, and all of that. But once we get to the raga, then now we are not only doing the things just in a very mechanical way, but now we are putting the emotion behind it, right? So, so one layer, extra layer is building up. We, you have been doing things just in a very mechanical way, but now you are doing with some emotion, right? So, so how to have that emotion there? Once we are very study, S-T-E-A-D-Y, study in our emotion. We have done, uh, you know, in a very mechanical way. We have advanced, we are now we are all the time acting with some emotion. Then that emotion will lead to deep, you know, feeling for Supreme Personality of Godhead. You know, so it says that uh, bhava, so if flower is completely open up, Bhava is like in the boarding stage. It's about to open, okay? So, so, so this continually, you know, kind of building up. And Prema Bhakti is very much like completely, you know, grown up flower. The flower has all the petals and everything now very much opened up. But Bhava Bhakti is kind of the boarding stage, where it's still, the, you know, you can see the petals, but it's still it's kind of, you know, within, uh, you know, uh, other, uh, you know, part of the flower. It's not completely open. And sadhana bhakti is very much now, you know, flower has started coming up. If you see that, oh yeah, it is coming up, but there is not much growth. Okay, so slowly and slowly kind of progressing. So when we are talking about prema bhakti and bhava bhakti, we are not forgetting the basic concept of what is bhakti. We can't just come to the bhava stage and forget about the bhakti. 
bhava bhakti so it's kind of gradual progression that that will happen Prabhu, one quick question. Yes, Mataji. So, which book are we following, Prabhu? Are we following Prabhupada's this summary book? Or are we following this? this uh, you have, you have, you have uh, uh, Bhakti Samdhya Sindhya Rupa Goswami? Yes. Prabhu. So, here is, here is what will happen. That's a very good point. You always ask good questions. Here is that's what will happen. I'm going to follow Prabhupada's uh Summary. you know flow chart like flow you know yeah i'll follow basically Prabhupada summary but i'm going to bring the information from sarupa goswami bhakti samrita sindhu so both because i was just trying to read this but it's not broken into this sections yes. in, in Prabhupada's yes. book yes so and you'll be one, you'll be getting yeah. so you re, that's why you please read <laughs> that's a good question you please read mm. nectar of devotion but I'll be talking mostly from Bhakti Samrita Sindhu by Rupa Goswami. Yeah. That's a good point. So, so I should have mentioned that. So everybody, please remember that, you know, I'm going to give you more than what is, you know, Bhakti I'm mean, not more, I should not say that, you know, I'm going to give more. But in the summary, basically, Prabhupada has very much presented everything in a, a story format, right? So I'm going to bring the verse. I'm going to, uh, you know, break down the verse. and the same thing Prabhupada has written in the textual format. Okay, so summary is what is our basis, but we'll be pulling the information from uh, Nectar of uh, Sorry Bhakti Samrita Sindhu by Silaruka Goswami. Is it okay? So that's how we'll follow. Make sense, Mataji? Yeah, but that yeah, but very good point. We need to have those type of questions so that you know I may assume X Y Z. But if you are not clear, please ask. So that's yes. So we are going to basically uh, do like that. But for you, uh, that's why I'm saying that for this one, uh, as I'm going along, I might have to send some more material. Look at the homework material that I send you. It has you know a lot of uh, items there, a lot of stuff there. But still, if you feel like that there is something missing, please let me know, and I'll be you know I'll be providing that. Okay. So for homework, Prabhu, which book we are referring, Prabhu? Homework, are we referring homework to? we'll still, uh, we have sent you the homework, and for the homework, summary, uh, Nectar of Devotion summary will be sufficient. Plus some of the information that you are learning from here. Okay. Prabhu, that's, that's yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes, plus some of the you know study material that is given in your homework, that. So all of that thing you have to put together. You know, you, you know maybe here is the best way to put. 50% from the NOD, you know, uh, written by Sri Prabhupada, 25% is going to come from the material that we have given you, and 25% to 30%, maybe 30% from the discussion that we are going to do. Because maybe in the exam also, we'll just take some of the concept and ask, which might not be, you know, given in a very extensive format in summary book. But what that will do is that it will give you just some holistic understanding of the context that what is being spoken what are the some of the key concept that that we have to carry but the verses we need to memorize are in this book but from Srila Goswami's book yeah so i didn't know that you have it but if you have bhakti samrita sindhu varupa goswami from there all the verses are there are not many verses that we have to memorize when i did bhakti sastri i just had you know i googled those verses and i found you know from bhagavatam chatan charita amrita has all those verses <laughs> so i will basically go into chatan charita amrita and you know write those verses and remember it and write into the exam but here for our discussion i'll be showing you those verses too i'll come on okay, by okay. good anything else so uh, now we are getting into definition of Uttam Bhakti. And very beautiful verse, many of you know. Anyavilasita sunyam, gyan karmadya navritam, anukulena krishnanu, silanam bhakti rutama. So any point of time, if we want to check ourselves that am I really engaged in devotional service devotional service 
then this is the verse 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 so 1 1 1 1 11 verse from uh, Bhakti Samrita Sindhu this is the verse that give us the idea what is the Bhakti Bhakti has to be Anya Vilasita Sunyam Gyan Karmadi Anavritam Anukulenu Krishna Nu Silinam Bhakti Rutama the highest <coughs> Bhakti Uttama Bhakti is defined as continuous service or emotions Anushilanam directed towards Krishna. His expansion forms or others related to him, bracket Krishna, with a pleasing attitude towards Krishna, Anukilena. It should be devoid of desire other than the desire to please the Lord, Anyavilasita Sunyam, and unobstructed by impersonal gyan, the materialistic rituals of karma or other unfavorable acts, gyan, karmadi, anavritam, bhakti samrita, sindhu. So we'll try to basically, you know, uh, break it down and get the key concept that we have to get. But this verse is called Privasa Sutra of the bhakti samrita, sindhu. So what is the Privasa Sutra of Bhagavad Gita? Who can say? What is the Parivasa Sutra verse of Bhagavad Gita? Yes. So Parivasa Sutra is basically a, a verse, Sutra means verse, sloka, that gives the definition, that basically gives the essence and everything else that's being spoken is spoken to justify this particular concept. So to justify Anya Vilasita Sunyam Gyan Karmadi Anavritam Anukulenu Krishna Nu Silnam Bhakti Rutmam to justify other details are given so that we can understand this concept you know in very <coughs> clear way. So this will be Paribhasa Sutra for uh, Bhakti Samrita Sindhu study. So now let us try to understand uh, this verse in a uh, little bit more detail. So this verse has multiple item men, uh, mentioned. So we can basically uh, categorize everything that's mentioned here in two major bucket. The first one is basically primary characteristic, which is also called Mukhya Lakshana. And then the second one is secondary characteristic that's called Gone Lakshana. So you might not find this in the summary. So main characteristic Mukha Lakshana and <coughs> Gone Lakshana. Okay. So what is the Mukha Lakshana? What is the prime you know, characteristic that holds the entire essence? If you remove this characteristic, then is no longer a Bhakti. Okay, so Anukulenu Krishna Anusilanam, that's, that's the Mukh Lakshana. Okay, Anukulenu Krishna Anusilanam. Anukulenu means it has to be Anukula, it has to be favorable. To whom? Krishna. And Anusilanam means to practice, practice with body, mind, and action. So the prime or the primary characteristic of the bhakti is that that it should it should have some activity some service and service should be either by our body or our mind or you know by our action and that service should be for krishna and it should be favorable. It should be in favor. So Kamsa, how to make the point clear? Kamsa also remembered Krishna all the time. And we as a devotee are also advised to remember Krishna all the time. So then somebody can say that, oh, Kamsa always thought about Krishna and he always made a plan. He was always active, right? He was always, you know, engaged in making plan 
to kill Krishna. So he he is a devotee because he he always was thinking about uh, Krishna. So Krishna was in his you know thinking, and he was making a plan to kill Krishna. No. The action should be, and we'll you know, learn more about that. You know, the action should be, which is going to favor to receive the mercy of Supreme Personality of Godhead. We don't want to engage in activity so that at the end of that, Krishna comes and kills. Mirtu Sarvahara Samaham. These things are very, very important. People, you know, if, if you say people, they would say, how you can say that, that Krishna is coming and killing me. Krishna is saying in the Bhagavad Gita, Mrithu Sarvahara Samaham. I come as a death and I get everything out. Okay, so we don't want, you know, to see Krishna in that form. Rather, we want to engage in favorable activities which will, which will inspire, which will help us to receive the mercy of Supreme Personality of Godhead. Okay, so what are the primary characteristic? The primary uh, characteristic of Uttama Bhakti is that that it has to be Krishna has to be the goal. It has to be. It has to be filled with lot of activities, and those actions that we are doing should be in favor. So how to know what is in favor? Who can say how to know what's in favor and what is not in the favor? Where Can we find me? what? Ah. Huh? Nectar instruction I think that's what it's Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Guru Sahasan Sadhu. So, so what's how to know that we are doing things which are in favor? Guru Sahasan Sadhu Vakya Tine Takariyakya. So devotee's life has three rail. Guru Sahasan Sadhu. No mental concoction. Devotee is very much guided. Like, you know, rail lives from, you know, Kolkata. It's going to Vrindavan. It has two rail. All it does is that it just runs over the two rail. And then it reaches, you know, Vrindavan. Likewise, devotee has three rails. Guru, Shastra, and Sadhu. And we just run. We just run on that three rail. And we reach to Golok Vrindavan, Supreme Personality of Godhead. So what is favor and what is not you know, favorable, favorable and unfavorable, we don't concoct. And Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, Lecture of Instruction, Isopanishad, Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavatam, these are Shastra, Guru and Sadhu. You know, through them, all of these three sources tell us what is favorable and what is not okay so these three things are very important as a primary limbs of pure bhakti what is the secondary limb the secondary limb is that 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 this appears to be or if you if you are engaged in that activity but if you are not following the primary limb then basically it doesn't establish, it doesn't, you know, establish the supremacy of bhakti. Okay. So secondary limb is important. Okay. But if it's not being, you know, complemented with the primary limb, then it's something else, not the bhakti. Is it clear? Like, for example, you know, if you want a, you know, if you want to have a tea, just to take the, the example, we don't take the tea, but I just came to my mind, tea, okay? So hot water, sugar, and tea has to be there. But in order for that to have a tea, hot water and sugar is sufficient? No, you must have to have tea. Then it's tea, right? So that's what it is. But so hot water and sugar are also important, right? But to make it tea, you have to put the you know, tea inside. So like what? So you can't say that hot water and sugar is not important, okay? But to be called as a tea, tea has to be there. So the primary character is that the tea. 
and the secondary character is that the hot water and sugar okay so secondary and that is why sometimes one might be engaged into this gona lakshana thinking that one is engaged in primary lakshana one might be sipping a sweet water hot sweet water and thinking that i am sipping tea very important very important to see it differently very clearly to understand am i really sipping that hot water and thinking that i am having tea or i am really getting the tea if tea is missing then all you are sipping is the hot water my dear devotees when i'm saying this thing it's too much for me than to you i know i don't want to sip that hot water so bhakti sometimes if it's not done under the guidance of a bona fide spiritual master under the guidance of an advanced devotee under the guidance of a guru shastra and sadhu my dear devotee you are sipping that hot sweet water it may appear that you have that tea there but it's not there so bhakti samrita sindhu will help us understand that what exactly is bhakti when we should know that we are doing bhakti and when we should know that we are not doing bhakti so anya vilasita shunyam all other desire anya others avilasa desire and shunyam means it should be completely nullified we'll get into that discussion a little bit later so anya vilasita shunyam there should not be any other ulterior desire and then gyan karma anavritam we are doing bhakti shastri are we doing bhakti shastri for knowledge what is the goal of our bhakti shastri who would like to share krishna bhakti krishna bhakti yes are we you know we are doing homework we are going through exams you know we are every hour every you know saturday spending one hour and we are doing all of this. it doesn't feel any difference than than going and you know getting degree from a college from washington university right but but what makes this difference is that that although we are getting some knowledge we are engaged in some sort of action some sort of activity but both of our gyan and karma is leading to have form faith the cloud the, the the doubt that is you know around us as cloud which is not letting us see krishna this gyan is going to vidya vinaya sampanna brahmane gavahastina this this knowledge is going to take that cloud out so that it, you know <clears throat> we can see krishna okay ekala iswara krishna baki sarva bharya so we can see that there is only one ishwar that you know vyasayatmika buddhi eka kurunandana so that you know kurunandan or that that supreme personality of godhead is one and the one whose faith is form has no other duty krishna is saying vyasayatmika buddha ekha kurunandana bahu shakha anantasya avyasayatmika buddha so the one whose faith is form has no other no other vyasaya has no other things to do they they have they have no other activity to do he he doesn't have interest with any other activity why because his faith is form what is his form faith his form faith is that ishwara prama krishna suchidanand vigraha anadi radir govinda sarvakaran karnam he has come to that stage that prama ishwar is bhagavan sri krishna and he is cause of all the causes so bhakti shastri is not you know gyan prayasa it's basically bhakti prayasa and this is 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 anukula it's anukul it's not pratik anukule nu krishna nu you know it's anukul because by doing this one you know we are understanding krishna more we are understanding the limbs and the process by which we can come close to krishna so please do not think that this gyana is uh, you know gyana 
uh, of what we get in the school the karma the action that we do also adi etc anavritam all has to be rejected so we'll try to you know uh, dive deeper little bit more into uh, this subject so this is very very important concept to understand the mukhya lakshana and gon lakshana now let's uh, try to understand uh, these things in more uh, detail so anushilanam okay anushilanam is basically referring here to uh, continuous service that we do from our mind body and word so there are two types of anushilanam chesta rupa anushilanam chesta means you know endeavor desire and bhava rupa anushilanam anushilanam means anu refers to uh, continuously and silanam means activities so continuously uh, we are engaged in doing some service for supreme personality of godhead but anushilanam can be of two types chesta rupa anushilanam and bhava rupa anushilanam so chesta rupa anushilanam refers to devotional service at the sadhana stage like getting up in the morning you know we have a struggle to get up in the morning take shower you know we have problem getting up and you know issues sitting on the floor because we have pains in the body but we have a strong chasta chesta we have value we have we have digested that at least that part that I have to chant. Chetu dapna marjanam bhava maha davagni nirvapanam sirah kaira vachandrika vitarnam vidya vadu jivanam anandam budhi vardhan pati padam purna amrita swadhanam saratam sanapanam param vijayate sri krishna sankirtanam. So by chanting the name of Krishna, you know all the dirt that I have, I have, you know, it's going to get out. All the contamination that I have accumulated, birth after birth, going through bhu naam jadma naam ante. You know all the birth that I have taken. You know sometimes cat, whatever. You know dog, tiger, elephant, whatever it was. All the dirt that I have accumulated, all of, all of that is going to be marginum. Is going to be cleaned. Although it's not been cleansed, but we have that value. And on that value, we are getting up in the morning and engaging in sranam kritnam vishnu smarnam pad sevanam archanam bandanam dasyam sakhyam atma nivedanam this uh, bhagavatam uh, sorry bhakti samrita sindhu will teach there are 64 limbs of the bhakti out of that 64 nine are mukhya you know limb out of that nine fives are prominent limb so all of that will come but we are engaged in that although we don't have a real test but we are still engaged with one promise that by doing that at due course of time my cheta my consciousness will be cleansed and then jivara sarupaya nitera krishna das i will come to that stage where i know that i am not the servant i am not the master i am not this i am not that i am not that gopi bharta padakamlayor das das anudasha you know, I'm servant of the 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 millions, billions, billions, billions times servants of the devotees. So that's that has to happen. And for that, we are doing chista. Chista rupam anusilanam. We have taken the activity in our life. We are chastising ourselves with the promise that one day, you know, that light chetodarpanam, you know, marginam will happen. And by doing that, bhava rupanusilnam. Once the emotion, the higher emotion has, you know, uh, developed in our consciousness, has awakened in our consciousness, then we have now taste. We have now taste, and we don't have to really put the alarm to get up at four o'clock, but we'll get up four o'clock. You know, we are we are not forcing ourselves to go to the you know temple we are not forcing ourselves to see deity as krishna rather we see that you know the emotion has developed and that is this does bhakti stops no bhakti never stops right bhakti will never stop but what will happen is that that 
once we transcend, then our bhav will change, will elevate to higher consciousness. And then in higher consciousness, we can do bhakti in more releasing way. How come Haridas Thakur can say that, my dear Lord, you know, I, I have only one tongue and your holy name is so potent, so powerful that I need millions and millions of tongue and billions and billions of years to hear it. Do I have that realization? No, maybe some of you have, but I do not. But does Bhakti stop for Haridas Thakur? No, he was even a staunch, powerful devotee. So Bhakti leads to Bhakti. Okay, so that's another way to say, what is, what is the Anusilanam? Anusilanam is basically the Silanam activity which are leading to the higher taste, okay, which is making us more, you know, uh, which is going to bring us more close to Krishna. So we have to start our Anusilanam in Chesta Rupa and Chesta Rupa Anusilanam is Badi Bhakti and Bhava Rupa Anusilanam is Raga Anuga Bhakti. We'll talk. This is a different term, but I just wanted to, you know, share that also. So devotional service, when it's done in Bhava, and even in higher stage, bhava and prema too, then it's called bhava rupa anusilanam. And then let's try to understand anukul. Anukul means things which are in favor, right? And there are two possible definitions of anukulena. Uh, that which is pleasing to Krishna and that which is done for pleasing Krishna. Okay, so Anukulena have to, that's also very important. These things should guide. This, this is a very important thing. I don't know whatever language I have, I'm trying to express. I'm trying to make it important that these things are very, very important. What is Anukula? Two, there could be two definitions of Anukula. Something which is pleasing to Krishna and something that is done for pleasing Krishna. Which one is right and why? So who would like to share? Which one you think is the right approach? Please don't hesitate, you know, uh, just share whatever. An example is given here that what a lady pleases, Mata, yeah, What pleases Krishna is Anukulan. So what is pleasing to Krishna and that which is done for pleasing Krishna. So which one is right and why? So you said something Mataji? Both of them are pleasing to Krishna. Something which is pleasing to Krishna and something which is done for pleasing Krishna. So is, are you seeing any difference between them or no? Yes, I think done, done for pleasing Krishna is more important. Yes. So why it's so, why Prabhu, why you think so? Because you are, that really shows the bhakti within you that what you are yeah. doing for Krishna You're rather, than, rather than imagining. Yes, very good point. Thank you Prabhu, very good. Yes, so you see here in the picture that, uh, you know, we just had that Krishna is Akhira Samrita Murti, right? Right? So he has reciprocation with all the rasas. But does, so what does it mean? That all of these rasas are pleasing to him, right? So Chanura and Mustika fighting with Krishna, is it not pleasing to Krishna? Yes, Krishna wants somebody to fight with him, right? Right, so 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 that you know fighting with Krishna is also pleasing to Krishna, okay? But it is not done, you know, for pleasing Krishna. But it is done. In fact, although it's giving pleasure to Krishna, but it's done to kill Krishna, right? Right? Like Chanura and Mustika didn't kill Krishna, but their intent was to kill Krishna. But on the other hand. This Mataji here, who is doing Arti to Krishna, right? That's also pleasing to Krishna, right? But that service that she is doing, she is intending to please Krishna. She is not doing it, right, to conquer over. So you see the difference? 
So Prabhu, can we uh, like yeah, say yeah. the sec second one is like primary rasas and the first one is more like secondary rasas? So you have to explain <clears throat> a little bit more. So I was just saying like in the second one where we are saying that which is done for pleasing Krishna is more like servitor, um, sakya rasa, dasya, or Shanta, whereas the first one is like chivalrous, yeah, rasa, anger. Yes. yes. So you know this is so bus you know gone, uh, gone and mukhya lakshana, mukhya and gone lakshana. Both of this lakshana, gone lakshana, you know, uh, sometimes may not be bhakti, okay. But for a devotee, also gone lakshana is important because he is using that for bhakti. But here, here, although he is pleasing Krishna, but his intent is not to please Krishna. So you have a hot water with sugar, right? Devo, you know, and your goal is to have a tea. So you will use hot water with sugar for tea, right? But someone can use the hot water to mix the poison. Right, so hot water with tea is the gone secondary criteria, but you are not mixing with poison. Okay, you are mixing with so devotee, devotee is using the secondary characteristic to enhance the primary one or to add, you know, or to make their primary one superior or better or a stronger or a staunch, but he's not, you know, adding something that's detrimental. So, although Chanura and Mustika fought with Krishna, but his fighting was not, although it, it, pleased, you know, it pleased Krishna, because that's what you know, all the demons did. Krishna wanted to have a good fight. But, but their desire is not to please Krishna. Their desire is to mix poison, not the, not the you know, tea, or not, you know, I, unfortunately, I ended up getting into the wrong direction, tea. I should have chosen something else. But you understand the point, right? Yes, Prabhu. So that's so that's that's the kind of difference here. But you so, can say, Prabhu, you can say decaffeinated tea. Decaffeinated <laughs> tea. Let's let's have Asok Prabhu add some value. Yes. So decaffeinated tea. Okay. So that's what it is. Okay. Although we don't even take decaffeinated tea, but let's put it. It's a little palatable. So is it clear, Mataji? So so yes, yes, so, so although it's pleasing, so sometimes. No, if, you know, you know that's why Krishna says that nobody is my enemy. Why? Because everything, you know, whatever somebody desire has, that person is enjoying their desire, and by giving that, you know, enjoyment, parents do have some, you know, uh, do have some, you know, satisfaction. But does it really give the complete satisfaction? If my son and daughter, if they are on the wrong track, as long as they're alive, I will say you no. Know, as long as they have, you know, they're alive, I am okay, right? But if they will be devotee, that will be very pleasing to me. So like that, you know, they are, you know, they are not dead. They are still alive. They are doing something. It's good. So, so we have to basically, whenever we are engaged in certain activity, we have to basically endeavor this one. Do to please Krishna. Okay. So that was the primary uh, uh, characteristic. Characteristic. Sometimes if you say quick and then you you know jump the syllable so anya vilasita sunyam that's the secondary one now anya vilasita sunyam means devoid of other desires that are deep rooted as part of our nature okay so uh, somebody would like to read that i think it's better to read i don't want to but at the same time i don't want to read mother you want to read one of you everything that's given here and then i'll talk I can read, Prabhuji. Yeah, please read. Anyaphilashita Shunyam means devoid of other desires that are deep-rooted as one's nature. In a death-threatening situation, a devotee might ask for the Lord to save him. This is just a temporary desire and is not a desire that is deep-rooted in his nature. Hence, this is not harmful to his Bhakti, Gajendra versus uh, Draupadi. Yeah, other des other yes, desires means any other desires other than to please Krishna through Bhakti. 
In other words, bhakti that is aimed at achieving bhakti is proper, else improper. Example, aim of sadhana bhakti is to attain bhava bhakti. Bhaktya sanjat sanjayatara sanjataya bhaktya. Okay, so I would just like to explain a little bit here. So, anya avilasita sunyam means avilasa is desire. So, all other desires should be shunya. Well, how is possible? We also have a desire to do bhakti, right? This is also a desire, right? So, when we are saying anya avilasita sunyam, we are not saying that all the desires should be sunyam, but we are saying that the desire that is not for Krishna consciousness, that desire should be sunyam. Okay, any other desire that is not the desire for getting the bhakti, pure bhakti, an example is given here that uh, bhakti sanjataya bhaktaya. So bhaktaya sanjataya bhaktaya. What does it mean? Means, you know, like draws the like. You know, if one is engaged in bhakti, one is engaged in devotional service, that devotional service should be leading us to the higher consciousness. Okay. So engaging ourselves in bhakti to lead to the higher stage of consciousness, transformation, okay? Information should be for transformation. Learning should be for transformation. So we should be transforming our consciousness, okay? An example is given that if one is engaged in sadhana bhakti, then he should be moving up from sadhana to bhava bhakti. So the goal of one to engage in sadhana bhakti is to get to bhava bhakti. So from sadhana bhakti to bhava bhakti, one has to have some desire. One has to have the desire to get to bhava bhakti. And that desire is required. That desire is required. You know, it's not like that uh, we should not have the desire to go to bhava bhakti. But the desire that is not to that's not helping us. So bhakti can be also taken for other ulterior motivations, right? We bhakti now you know we have to struggle, you know, entire Saint Louis for the name, fame, and for puja name, you know, puja, pratistha, love. But once we become devotee, then we have now only few people to convince. Okay, so. So my goal is to basically convince few of us, few of you, and make you, you know, someone who thinks that, you know, X, Y, Z, whatever it is, and, you know, get to the objective. Then that is not what the bhakti is. Bhakti goal is always transformation, leading, leading to the higher consciousness. And that, if the endeavor are being made in that direction, then it's really important. For example, planning your day to get up in the morning. That's important. Okay. But but anything else that's not helping us, you know, progress in our bhakti, that is not, you know, important. Sometimes, sometimes devotee might have some other desire. That's that's the important thing to understand. So we have we might have sometimes some other desire that may appear that that i'm not desiring right thing okay an example is given here gajendra versus Draupdi. okay gajendra <clears throat> when he was caught up by crocodile he's also calling out the name of krishna oh you know uh, vishnu please come and help uh, help me he is you know in eighth canto he chants a very nice you know, prayer. He says that, my dear Lord, you are everywhere. You are, you know, so he started, he was, because he was devoted in previous life. So he was remembering everything and he started, you know, remembering everything and chanting name of, you know, Krishna. But that particular moment when he was in danger, he called out 
the name of Krishna. Same thing happened with Draupadi also. Draupadi was being disrobed in that bad assembly, right? And time came, she also called out the name of Krishna. Okay, so does that mean since Draupadi desired for Krishna to come and help, she is not a Uttama Bhakta? Answer is no. Answer is no. Draupadi, although desired to save her, she is Uttama Bhakta. But Gajender, he also aspired, he also called out the name of Krishna to save. But since he, he just called out the name of Krishna at the time of danger, he is not considered a pure devotee. Okay. So accidentally, if there is some life danger, this is coming from Sri Ramapur Goswami. If there is some situation where we, where we are in life danger type of you know situation, then temporarily, for that particular instant, the where devotee will go. Devotee will go and beg the you know uh, shelter of the supreme personality of Godhead for everything. My dear Lord, you know my consciousness is so fallen. I'm so fallen. I can't even you know control my senses. Can you kindly help me? Pray, right? Prayer, praying. That's what we have to do, you know. So, so that type of avilasa, Rupa Goswami is saying, is not, you know, avoidable. It's not, you know, undesirable. Okay. So, a devotee is engaged in devotional activity. If he is aspiring, then his bhakti is still uttama bhakti. But so someone who is, yes, 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 yes. So are you saying Gajendra versus Draupadi? Are they both Uttama Bhaktas? No, no. Draupadi ah. is Uttama Bhakta. So Gajendra is not Uttama Bhakta. Only or Ajamila. Of, can we say Ajamila is Uttama Bhakta? Let's take the example of Ajamil. Ajamil yeah. also called out the name of Narayan, right? Yeah. Narayan came and saved. But he is Uttama Bhakta? No. Yes. No. Yes. So, 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 what's the understanding here we are getting? We are getting here. So, let me make a very beautiful point here. <clears throat> so, we have a sobhava, you know, and we have conditioning. Sobhava, we have a sobhava, and now let me put it in a different way. We have, you know, our uh, value system. Okay, we have some goals. Okay, and we have our sobhava. Okay. So, uh, for example, my desire by reading, you know, Bhagavatam, I know that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. My goal is to be, you know, a devotee who has no other obligation rather than promoting and preaching Krishna conscious. All of us wants to follow the footsteps of Srila Prabhupada. Right. I'm not sure if you can do it. That's why I use the word foot step. Follow the foot step. But that's our goal. Right. Right. So that's our goal. But our current status that we are in, are we doing it? How many of you will say you are doing it? Are we doing it or not? This is a very simple answer. Please say somebody else or no. No, 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 it's a mixed, mixed mixture. Yeah, we are basically mixed. So I'll just stop here. It's already 150. So this, you know, Bhakti Samdhya Sindhi will take time. But please, you know, uh, this is the last module and then we are done. So, so conditioning we have is still there. And conditioning will basically pull. Okay, whenever we are, you know, not in a good association, we try to be like that. Okay, when we go to devotee, we try to be like devotee. So we have that flickering, you know, personality. Okay, if you go to pure devotee, then we aspire to be pure devotee. If you go to very successful materialistic person, we try to be like them. Whoever we are going to, we are aspiring, you know, we are getting influenced by their consciousness. Right, although we know the gold standard is that, that we have to come to the stage where we are not being impacted by all of his consciousness. So what is our status? Where we stand? You know, 
this is coming from <coughs> uh, part of later in Bhakti Samhita Sindhu this concept will come but uh, this is coming from uh, basically uh, Madhur, Madhurya Kadamani and Bhakti Aloka also but it's been mentioned that once one Sobhava might not be perfect okay one Sobhava might not be perfect but one is making endeavor to purify their sabhava knowing the standard then he will be not punished for things which is still falling short that's why repentance is very very important will come you know devotee you know whenever devotee you know does something uh, something bad so here is a very simple example that that when you end up doing something wrong how you feel after doing that do we do wrong or not yes nobody can say that i don't we do i do we do end up doing sometimes under certain emotion you know end up doing something wrong but as soon as that thing is gone we suddenly get into the repentance oh why did I say something to my wife? She was being so nice. I didn't respect her. Sometimes I go and tell my wife, Kodanidhi, I'm so sorry. You know, I'm so happy to have somebody like you because you have given me full protection. But just because of you, I'm doing bhakti. I can give my full time and you take care of everything. But sometimes I do get mad on her. But as soon as I get quiet, I said, sorry. I should. So, the, so, so our Acharya is saying that as long as the standard you know and you repent for your shortcoming you are good don't worry too much you are still performing uttama bhakti very important concept please don't misuse it but please make a note of this one this concept know the standard we are always trying to get up in the morning we are always trying to be ideal you know devotee we are trying to be best person okay and that is why you if you have that type of seeing then you do not see fault in other devotee because he or she is also like you you know and that is why you look at you know your character first am i perfect no i'm not then why i'm expecting that asok prabhu should be perfect he is also trying to be a pure devotee, you know. So as long as goal is clear, our endeavor is sincere, we are performing Uttama Bhakti. But, but we know the goal, but we are not sincerely trying to do it. We do wrong thing, we don't have repentance for it. That's fallen down a stage. That's not a good stage. So, in our day-to-day -day, uh, dealings, we have a vilasa. Okay, we have desires, but as long as those desires are to purify our consciousness and to take us close to Krishna, although I might be falling short, don't be discouraged. Krishna will take us there. He will help us get us uh, get us there. But it has to be sincere endeavor we have to know the goals okay so that's what bhakti sastri will do it will help us understand the association of the devotee will do that for us it will help us understand the goal and then it will try to help us develop that sincerity so that although it might not appear that we are performing uttama bhakti pure devotional service still you are performing the pure devotional service so in that sense all of you are pure devotee who are following this two step okay who knows the goal and who are making the sincere endeavor you are a pure devotee i took a lot of time today because i just got into the you know loop of the discussion but with that i would like to give a uh, kind of pause here today and we'll resume from uh, next saturday any questions before we adjourn any last minute thing so i'm just Go ahead, please. Yes, Can I? please. Yeah, I stop. Prabhuji, so uh, in 